Well, welcome back to Brand Sushi Life. Uh, today I will be sharing with you um, just this uh, how I created this uh, kind of virtual museum or exhibitions or gallery, so whatever you call it. So basically, um, here's uh, the construction here. This is something that I created earlier. If you watch my other video, so it's quite abstract, but I think it fits the the mood for for this year. And then we have a bunch of photos here, uh, of which I applied solidifier. So we have like both sides um, of the image. So we don't need to worry which one is front and which one is back. All we need to do uh, is just to place to place the image. Um, as for the texture of this abstract object, I'm using a uh, Dream UV. Dream UV is an add-on that's allowing you to to use an atlas and then simply assigning it um, to this object based on uh, the deficiency of the atlas and then the texture so let's make the process automatic so put that aside so we have this gallery if i the only thing that you are if you are really new to blender the only thing that you you might find hard is to place this image into the spot i'm gonna show you that so file import images as planes and i'm gonna point into the folder with with all my photos well yeah just grab all of them you can choose to have them shadeless. So shadeless is almost like they're they're gonna glow. Um, they will not change uh, the shading. It's, so it's just gonna be the same value. Anyway, I I bring them in, so we have them like this by default. So this is uh, this is nice and handy already. But you want to place, you want to learn how to place them <clears throat> into the the wall, right? you can be placing anywhere here so the quick way i'm tapping t for the tool the quick way to do this is to to use the 3d cursor in the past the selections and cursor are actually the same so if you're in the select box this is like the tool to select an object and then you can rotate it etc um, 3d cursor however is to where you can you can click and snap on the wall you can snap these objects on the wall so basically if you set the 3d cursor into geometry so the way to do this so i have the 3d cur uh, 3d cursor tool selected so i can click anywhere if i want to place this guy in order to select this i think Shift right click. Oops, actually no. Shift left click. Okay. So that's how you do it. And then because I can't remember all the shortcuts, normally I use F3. I know that I want to snap the selections into cursor. So that's how you do it, basically. So I snap it there, and I can I can move it a little bit. If I want to rotate my image, I can do that. And while holding while holding control, you can snap it, maybe 45 degree or 90 degrees. So that's uh, oops. That's basically the process. 3D cursor. So there's also all these hotkeys like shift space bar and then space bar shift space bar and r i, I don't I'll, i don't always remember all that so next one maybe i want to put it here i want to put all the image on every angle every side of the this kind of a cube so shift click and then because i because i use this command a lot i just right click and then assign it into quick favorite so once it, it is inside quick favorite i can just tap q and make the selection goes into the cursor 
So again, just gonna do it very quickly, right? Put the 3D cursor where you want it to be. Shift click Q. Oh, okay. Ensure that you deselect everything before you do that. And okay. Shift space bar and rotate, right? This. And then Control rotate, control rotate, it should, there must be a way to snap it so it's only like 45 degree, and then move it slightly, so this is how I would do it. And then scaling rotations, uh, you know, you know the drill. S to scale, R to actually rotate. Okay, apparently I still have this. This one selected, so I I need to select this cursor. Q. Okay. So the rest is just rearranging this. I think there's probably a faster way to do this, or in the future we might be able to do that. So what I found after doing this kind of a uh, gallery work, sometimes you, if you turn this into AR or VR experiment, uh, like experience, you tend to be want to be on the inside of the structure and kind of move around. So it's a good idea to actually place the photo inside <coughs> the interior. So in if it's outside, you can rotate, which is nice. But sometimes you want to also put it inside. So keep that in mind. And uh, for example, like this image, or let's try this one. <coughs> you want to put it here for example so it feels kind of natural and then or actually um, on the wall so instead of instead of there you want to put it Somewhere, which, is, which one is the interior? Okay, here. Okay. And also, don't forget, um, with your Whatever you're creating, I mean, keep in mind of the size of the unit. So with this object, I can tell the dimension is around three meters. If I file export, export it into GLB or USDZ, the size actually matters when you're looking at these objects in real life. So that's going to be three meters around 3 meters high so let's keep that in mind so whatever whatever interior exterior um, room that you have to place all your artwork or photo keep in mind of the size and also I found that with AR something like this might float right so floating exhibitions can be fun and interesting but oftentimes with AR people like to have 
some kind of realism to it you know like they they could be hanging or you can have something that's supporting this structure i don't know why but with ar you, you want it to be planted on the ground sometimes so it, it really adds to the experience with the, this kind of photo like also with uh, ar if you if you turn this into ar and bring it into app like reality composer you can play around with the the, the spatial audio it's really cool actually um, so this is just an image but I imagine it, it could become like a interactive maybe tappable like live photos or can also be like a video so I'm I haven't I'm still working on an idea to you know like to work with a like a video wall um, but for now it's uh, I think it's pretty fun something to try yourself this one is a little bit abstract but if you are inside and you have this AR experience this kind of gallery is actually kind of fun to experience with so let's try let's go to fly mode F3 tap fly we have this uh, view view navigation fly navigation once you do that uh, you can fly basically using the AWSD so I don't like that kind of flying navigations I, I like the view fly navigations so let's try again F3 walk and fly navigations so this is very likely how is the experience gonna be if a person is holding their smartphone or tablet they're gonna walk around this let's do the control control space bar oops escape control option space bar okay I go to full screen and then F3 walk and fly navigation so this is uh, how the experience gonna be inside blender we can use lighting and we get nice ambient occlusions if it's an AR currently the the light is only being influenced by the real light unless the app allows you to to use your own lighting so control option spacebar to make it full screen again because my computer is kind of slow I usually work in a few viewport shading like this so with rotation okay I haven't told you you can also use RX you know like to do this and then just type in 90 degrees it's usually faster for most of the time so if we go back to this guy shift click so deselect everything shift click uh, you want to place it there okay Q selection to cursor RX 90 G Y because this is like this is uh, using uh, 90 degree of angle you can always quickly uh, use G X G Y or G Z G X G Y so this is uh, another way it's a lot faster so shift click select the photo click there selection the cursor rx 90 degree so that's because the angle is already correct rz 90 degrees shift click click there so here this is a tricky one right 
R Y ninety R X ninety G X. So that's a, a quick tutorial for beginners blender. How to quickly navigate, select objects, place it in position. Normally I use the this select box, however. If you hold it, there is more option. Lasso, select, tweak, select. Tweak is actually useful. If you are in a tweak mode, you can easily uh, click drag. Click drag to reposition your artwork. I don't use click drag too often, but might be handy. So this is some of my photos taken using the iPhone. Uh, recently we have this raw and so we can have this kind of HDR look. Very cool. Uh, what else? Yeah, in the future I want to make similar thing but maybe involving sound and video. With video everything is moving. So that's a... Uh, Currently, to make a video AR, you need to use an app. You can use a Swift Playground on the iPad, but yeah, anyway, anyhow. So let's say I'm happy with this. I'm going to save it very quickly. So what's important with this setup is you just need to have uh, some kind of interior. You can scan, scan a real life interior, like your room. So later on, you can actually place them in the positions. For now, I, I, I just use a random ab abstract looking structure. Just file, export, GLB. Make sure modifier is on. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot one thing. Oops. I need to select all these photos. And apply modifier. Solidify modifier so and then control L link the modifier so each one have thickness so I need to do that otherwise um, because this object is gonna be one side only the photo some of them might be flipped anyway export apply modifier So now if you go to Reality Converter, to convert this into an AR USDZ, this is just the basic example, it should work. Uh, if With your photo, by the way, if you use it, uh, you, you use your smartphone and it's, it's like 12 megapixel, etc., you need to resize it uh, beforehand. But if you've done it, everything correctly, this is... You, this USDZ is like maybe around 15 or 20, me 20 megabytes. You can send it to your friend, relatives, your client, and show it, show your artwork. So basically, so we are done. All right. So yeah, hopefully you find this interesting and useful. Um, thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.